Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa la'akibatu lil muttaqin Wa la'udwana illa ala zalimin Wa sallallahu ta'ala Nabiye sallallahu alaihi wa sallam An Abi Hurairata Radiyallahu anhu Anan Nabiye sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Sa'id al-minbar Faqala amin 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 Qayla ya Rasulallah Innaka hina sa'id al-minbar Kulta amin 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 Abu Huraira reported, the Prophet ascended the member and he said, Amin, three times. It was said, O Messenger of Allah, you ascended the member and you said, Amin, three times. Kala, inna Jibarila atani faqala man adaraka shahra ramadana wa lam yukfar lahu fadakhala nara fa ab'adahu allahu kul amin faqultu amin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jibril alayhi salam came to me and said, Whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and he is not forgiven, then he will enter the hellfire and Allah will cast him far away. So say Ameen and I said Ameen. We all know that the Prophet is described in the Quran as a mercy for all the worlds. As such, Allah's Messenger was never overcome with rage or hate against any harm that was inflicted against him. In such case, he would always seek forgiveness and guidance for the perpetrator. Aisha, the mother of the believers, radiallahu ta'ala anha, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hal ata alayka yawmun kana ashadda min yawmi uhud? Have you ever experienced a day harder than the day of the battle of uhud? Qal, laqad laqitu min qawmiki ma laqitu wa kana ashadda ma laqitu minhum yawm al-aqaba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Indeed, I experience them at the hands of your people, that is, the disbelievers from among the Quraysh tribe. The hardest treatment I met from them was on the day of Aqaba. Fanadani Malikul Jibali Fasallam Alayya Summa Kal Ya Muhammad Fakala Zali Kathima Sheta in Sheta and Adbiko Alayhimul Akhshabain. Then the angel of the mountains called out to me, greeted me and said, O Muhammad, Allah listened to what your people had said and done against you. I am the angel of the mountains and my Lord has sent me so that you may give your orders. If you wish, I will bring together the two mountains that stand opposite to each other of Mecca and crush them in between. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَلْ أَرْجُوا أَنْ يُخْرِجَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَصْلَابِهِمْ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا The Messenger of Allah said, I rather hope that Allah will raise from among their descendants people who will worship Allah, the only one, and who will not ascribe partners unto Allah in worship. But even though the Prophet never took revenge on his own behalf on anyone and was not given to impugning others, he was firm and stern against any violations against the laws, the tenets, and the principles of the deen. That being said, a Muslim has to really be genuinely wicked and sick at heart not to respect the sanctity of the sacred month and not to benefit from its infinite blessings. Imagine how much this would hurt the merciful and tender-hearted Prophet to the point that he didn't hesitate to say Amin at the order of the angel. So, O Muslims, as the hallmarks of Ramadan are forbearance, deliberation, and restraint in evil deeds and speech, we should take account of ourselves over the days that have already passed. How did we spend them? Did we preserve them by being obedient to Allah and did we benefit from them? Never lose track of the fact that the purpose of Ramadan is to increase in Iman. That's why fasting has been instituted on previous nations, not just on the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Quran has clearly stated, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala lazina min koblikum la'allakum tattakun. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may attain piety. Hence, the purpose of fasting is to rinse one's desires and wins oneself from the habits that control the lowly desires so that one will be ready to venture upon that which will protect the physical and spiritual well-being and ultimately purify the soul to live happily under the servitude of Allah forever. Hunger and thirst are just a means to reduce the influence of the overwhelming effects of the desires. So overall, fasting involves us spiritually, mentally, and physically. It has a wonderful effect on physical faculties and mental and spiritual energies as it restrains the faculties from following a person's inclinations in a way that could harm him in this world and the hereafter.
This is why fasting has been placed as the most powerful means in attaining taqwa, which in general terms means the drive to achieve the greatest inner quality that is developed deep within us through doing what is commanded and abstaining from what is forbidden for the sake of Allah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man lam yada' qawla zuri wal amala bihi falaysa lillahi hajatun fi an yada'at tu'amahu wa sharabahu. Whoever does not give up vain speech and evil actions, Allah is not in need of his leaving off his food and drink and Allah will not accept his fasting. So, O Muslims, know that just as rewards for good deeds are multiplied during Ramadan, sins for bad deeds are considered worse during this month as well. Therefore, do not cut your fasting hours on Facebook, going through other people's dirty laundry, chatting on the phone about useless things or watching trash on TV. This is completely antithetical to the sacred months as we all know fasting is to restrain from more than just what we put into our mouth. Also, if we willingly sleep through the days and missing prayers on time because we allowed Hollywood or Bollywood entertainment galore to invade our lives at night, filling our thoughts and minds of immorality, profanity and anti-Islamic themes with Without it bothering us, then we surely need to realize that it's not the devil, it's just us. Under such condition, it becomes imperative to recall to mind the reason why we fast. And to contemplate the meaning of fasting, we should go back to the verse elucidated in the Quran on fasting. O oh Muslims, we have to try to fight temptations with all our minds this Ramadan. For if we can't relinquish our bad habits in this month which serves as a training ground for us to attain taqwa, through which we attain excellence in worship and cultivate adorable qualities, then the chances of doing so out of this month remain bleak. Consequently, we would continue to fall victims to the lure of the God of our own vain desires. Here we have an opportunity as Allah promises us that the reward for doing good deeds and actions during this blessed month will be multiplied greater than usual. And this should be encouraging to us to increase our level of worship and consciousness of Allah. Hence, it is essentially responsible of us to spread this message to those Muslims who do not observe this month in the way that it is necessary. As there are so many fasting people who are being lured into vain deeds that either nullify their fast totally or take away from its merits. Sad to say, while too many Muslims only concern themselves with spending the night awake and eating more and playing around on things that have no benefit, a great deal of Muslims don't even fast these days. It is extremely hard to believe how Muslims still do the most unexpected things during these sacred days and with no awareness of the inconsistency. Surely bad deeds and sins committed in this glorious month are from the hearts of the people alone. The devil cannot be blamed since he and his troops are locked up and they don't have the chance to whisper in our ears or twist our thoughts and change our good actions. Undoubtedly, this mighty month is the best time to work on polishing the different aspects of our character as Allah tells us in another verse. Inna akramakum inda Allahi at kakum. The most honored by Allah among you are those best in taqwa. In addition to the verse, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Inna min khiyarikum ahsanakum akhlaqan. The best among you are those who have the best manners and character. Allahumma ja'alna min al-muttaqeen wa la ta'jalna min al-khasirin.